guys in the dark. So I used to drive between San Francisco and Cheyenne, Wyoming a lot of times. It's about 16 to 20 hours of driving, depending on the weather. My second time driving that route, I was driving at night, when suddenly my truck starts to make this odd grinding noise. It sounded like if it had run over something, and it happened to have gotten stuck. It's about 2 a.m. I pull up to a very lit rest stop. I wake up my buddy, who has been sleeping this whole time. As we both make our way out of the vehicle, I start to explain to him the situation about the grinding noise. When he started to hear what it sounded like a kid crying. Mind you, there's not a lot of cars in sight, besides ours. And at the same time, we had heard frequent stories about child trafficking, kidnappings nearby. So we decided to go check it out. We grabbed our flashlights and made our way towards the bathrooms, which the noise was coming from there. As we got closer, we realized that it was coming from the woman's bathroom. It's a low, dull sobbing, and we were prepared for the worst. We walked in expecting to see someone brutally beaten, or possibly even worse. We see nothing, but only hear the sound. It's still there, but there's no one there. It's completely empty inside. We turn on the lights. Still, there's nothing. We check each stall just to make sure. There's nothing. We even looked exactly where the noise was coming from, and again there was nothing. I wasn't sure if it was a camera, or a hidden speaker. I'm really not sure what the fuck was going on. My buddy happens to see a small window. He opens it up. The noise suddenly stops. We stood there for a few seconds, and the window slams shut on its own, and the crying began once again. We were out of that bathroom in seconds as we ran towards the truck. Funny thing is, we could still hear the crying, of course. The grinding noise is still there, though. So this time, I pull up to another rest stop some miles away from where we checked underneath. We saw some sort of red and silver metal stuck right in there, but we couldn't take it out. A few days later, I had to take it to a mechanic buddy of mine. He told me that the piece of scrap metal that was stuck was part of a kid's bicycle. I don't know if this is somehow related to our experience, but it was one of those moments for me that I definitely will never forget. This happened to me just a couple of days ago, around 9 p.m., and decided to go walk my dog. I like to walk him at night, as very few dogs and people are around at this time. Anyways, I live on an estate, and outside my estate, there's a long stretch of back roads which lead to a huge farm. Me and my dog usually walk down this road, as there is hardly ever any people around, barely any cars either. We never had a problem there, until the other night. I wear glasses, but I do try out contacts once in a while, as my only pair of glasses at the moment are breaking. They're being held by glue, so they're pretty flimsy. Also to note that my dog is Border Collie, so he's decently sized, but still gets very anxious and easily startled at times. So while we were walking, we heard a cow, which was pretty common around here, but it still scared my dog. I decided to hurry up and walk to the no trespassing sign that we usually walk to, then back and walk home. On the way back, we heard a cow again. No clue if it was the same one from before, but it sounded like it was in pain, and it was very loud, which scared my dog. So he started to run. I'm only 16, and maybe about 5 foot 6. He started to pull me, so I had to start running, which causes my flimsy glasses to break. Well, at least one of the arms did. I took them off, and tried to find the broken arm of my glasses after my dog had stopped running. When I reached the place that I thought that it fell, started looking, which was hard with no glasses on. Anyways, we heard another shriek, except for it wasn't a cow. It sounded more like a woman's scream, if she had smoked her entire life. It was very loud, and took me and my dog by surprise. This time, we both started running. Bear in mind, this stretch of road is usually a goddamn long, and we were only about halfway across it. So that was about another 20 minute walk. But while we were running, I kept hearing that damn shriek. It was getting closer and closer. After a few seconds, beside me in the tree line to the left, I think that I saw a dark figure moving, and then it disappeared. We eventually made it out. I took a look back, and this time I was sure there in the middle of the road was a black figure staring directly at me and my dog. It was pretty tall too. It definitely was not a shadow or a ghost as the leaves and bushes shook it as it went into the tree line, then into the field. Even though I didn't have my glasses, 
I was sure that I had seen it there, as my dog was also staring at whatever it was. On the way back, though, we kept on hearing that scream. It wasn't getting closer, though, but it was still pretty terrifying. I definitely won't be going back there anytime soon. I originally had wrote this on a couple of forums to figure out if someone could help me to know exactly what that was. I was driving home one night, as I had not seen my family for about two weeks. I was filled with excitement. I decided to take a shortcut through a desolated area that I didn't know too well. I had heard stories through the scanner about it, mostly ghostly tales. And I do, as a matter of fact, believe in ghosts. But my eagerness to surprise my wife and kids got the best of me. It was around 3 a.m. or so in the morning. I had been on that particular road for about an hour already. There was nothing out of the ordinary that had happened. Suddenly I get to an area packed with old creepy trees on the side, and there's tons of shrubbery. As usual, my radio was on, and out of nowhere this horrible static starts to crackle through the speakers. I started to feel pretty chilly, and very uncomfortable. When wouldn't you know it, I saw a man hanging from the tree on the side of the road. There he was. His body was even swinging from side to side. I stepped on the brakes as fast as I could, and carefully, just so that I could keep looking through the rearview mirror. And he was still there. I grabbed my coat, my gun, and my flashlight. I had my phone in my pocket. I started to dial 911, but there was no signal. I made my way to the shrubs, and when I reached the tree, he was gone. I moved the flashlight around, thinking that maybe he got free. I went back to my truck, looked back. There he was once again, hanging like I had seen him before. After this, let's just say that I didn't like taking shortcuts anymore. So I had got loaded up in Louisiana at around 2.30 in the morning. I wanted to be home in Texas by sunrise, so I took the back roads. I'm hauling ass. It's getting close to about 3.15. I have the radio on. All of a sudden, the truck linked in front of me. I see a black, misty, rectangular box. It's probably a coffin. Fly over the road just from the right to the left. I hit my brakes, not wanting to run over anything. I slowed to about five miles per hour. I looked over to the left, and there was an old cemetery. I looked straight ahead, and I got the hell out of there. Also on I-81, near Dublin, and right at the exit of 98, there's an empty lot right next to a fast food joint. It was around 3.30 in the morning. I couldn't keep my eyes open anymore, so I decided to pull in for the night. I released the brakes, just stumbled to the back to go get some sleep. As soon as I lie down, I hear a banging on the door. My immediate thought was the cops probably saw me pull in, or it's a private property, and I have to move. So I get up and open up the cabin curtains. There's no one around. No lights whatsoever. It's quiet. Then slowly I hear knocking on the top sleeper window, which are pretty damn high. They're over ten feet, probably. Just on the left is a slow and steady knock, and the right is a more fast-paced knock. I'm so tired that I ignore it and pass out. That night not only did I have the most terrible dream, but I felt somebody was watching me from inside the sleeper. When I was trucking on a run through east-central Texas, I was on my way back to Louisiana in the middle of the night. I was driving up a hill on a smaller state highway when my truck started acting pretty funny. It was slowing down as I approached the top of the hill. I couldn't make it go any faster, though. There were old wood-framed houses on the side of the road, but it looked like everyone was in bed for the night. My engine started to knock as it slowed down. The wind was blowing leaves through the road in front of me, and something about that didn't look right to me. I started to be more than a little freaked out, but I kept as calm as I could. Just as I reached the top, my truck was nearly stopped. I heard the most disturbing sound. It was the passenger door latch, which I had kept locked, clicked as if someone was trying to open up the door. The door swung open for a few seconds, and then it shut itself. After this, the engine smoothed out, and I began to pick up speed. I kept going until I reached the next truck stop and got some coffee to compose myself with. This past summer for my graduation gift, my mom and grandmother took me to Alberta to go watch the Spruce Meadows Master Tournament. We flew out there, so we decided to use Uber to get to and from the showgrounds. 
We don't have Uber where I'm from, but everyone says Uber drivers in the area were awesome. For the first three days, the drivers were great. They picked us up within five or so minutes and got us there in 15 minutes tops. The cars were clean and safe. On day four, we called for an Uber 45 minutes before the time we wanted to be picked up at, which was 9.30 a.m. 10 a.m. rolls around, and we thought that we'd give it another 10 minutes before calling for a different driver. 10.05-ish, the original driver comes. In his profile, it said he was driving a 2017 Dodge Journey, but when he got there, it was definitely the right guy, but he was in this old, run-down looking beater. My first instinct was to go up to the driver window and ask him to roll it down. Before I could ask him his name, just to check and make sure, and ask him what happened to his car, the app said that he would be driving. He almost shouted at me in a very angry tone. Yes, I'm so-and-so. This is my sister's car. Mine's in the shop. Now get in, ladies. I have other riders waiting. I was shocked and scared already at this point. I looked at my mom and my grandmother. They said to just get in, so I did. I sat in the back with my grandma, and my mom sat in the front. We told him where we needed to go, and we were on our way. He had taken a different route that he claimed was quicker. On the highway, in Calgary, 15 minutes is already pretty fast. 15 to 20 minutes had passed, and he had been chatting up my mom in a very flirtatious way the whole ride. He had taken us into the countryside that seemed to be forever away from where we were going. It was actually the opposite direction, and I asked him if he knew where he was going, and if we could get back onto the highway. He ignored me and kept on driving. Another ten minutes passed. I was freaking the hell out. My mom was obviously quite uncomfortable as well, and we were still in the countryside. He pulls over on the side of the road. We just sat there for a solid five or six minutes. At this point, I was shaking and had to hold my grandmother's hand. The driver turned around to put his hand on my leg, but I quickly shift away. Then he proceeded to look at all three of us and say that I'm sorry for the long ride, ladies. I know I've gone out of the way, but you're all just too beautiful for me to let you leave so soon. What the fuck, dude? I wanted to get out of the car. We all sat there in silence, and all I could think was, holy fuck, this guy is going to kill us. He made other creepy remarks towards me, commenting on how youthful and full of life I am. Some real serial killer stuff. After sitting there in shock for what felt like hours... My sweet, quiet grandmother screamed at him, telling him to turn around and get back on the highway. He finally pulled off the side of the road and continued on the country road. The whole way he kept looking back at me and making increasingly sexual marks. About an hour and a half later, we got to the grounds. I was extremely shaken up and almost in tears. I wished we had just called another Uber. I hope he doesn't do this to all of his female passengers. I will never be taking a ride share ever again. Uber driver from hell. You made me miss like two hours of the show. You scared me half to death. I gave you zero stars. I've already called your superiors, and I really hope that you get fired for this. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, like, and hit the bell for notifications on future videos, and become a stalker of the night, and I'll see you next time.